G'day guys, welcome to a new video. And to be really honest, we've been getting so many questions about doing a walk around, but we wanted to live in the van for a few weeks so we really got to know it, so we could give you as much information as possible. We're here at the most beautiful Cape Arid, which is about 100 k's east of Esperance. Couldn't be a better spot to be able to bring you this. The van's a little bit dirty, but that's okay. Let's go and have a look. So there's so many things to talk about on the outside of this van. I've decided to start at the back because I want to finish under this most amazing outdoor living area. But a couple of things that are really important here on the back of the van, we've got an external input for our solar. And that solar is going to my Drive soft panel over here, which is running into the DC-DC in the van. Now, new in the 2024 model, 600 watts of solar on the roof as well. And that's all regulated by an MPPT. Whereas this soft solar panel uh, for the external input is going into the DC-DC. So we've got actually two power feeds coming into the van at the same time. Let's have a look around the back. So we've got a single spare tire on this particular van. I was a little bit worried about that, but to be really honest, when we did our lap with two spares, we never had two blowouts at the same time. So that's a lot of weight that we were carrying that we generally would never use. So what we've got on the back of this van is two jerry can holders. We're choosing to carry water in this particular one. We've got it on the driver's side of the van just to kind of offset the fact that we've got the large fridge here. We've got the awning and those sorts of things. So just thinking about our weight distribution and those sorts of things. Over here, we've got a tunnel boot at the back of those toolboxes. Currently in these tunnel boots, we've got our poles for our awning set up. And we also carry Movo's fishing rods in there as well. They all fit in there really nicely, locked away out of the way. We've got our outdoor unit for the Thetford toilet. No one really gets excited about toilets, but what I love about these Thetford toilets is that they've got an individual flush water tank. That allows us to run some of that nice pink smelly stuff, keeps the van smelling nice. And it's additional 19 litres of water that you're not taking from your water tanks when you're off grid. And we've been off grid for almost a week now. So water conservation is one of the things that we're thinking about. Sorry about how tight it is here. Here we've got our outdoor shower and our kick-ass shower tent. Where we're set up today, we haven't got the ability to be able to get that up. Awesome when you're at the beach though, particularly if you've got lots of kids. We've never really used these, but I can understand how people in particular user cases would be using them. We've also got our freshwater fill for our rear tank. We've got our grey water access, and that's really important to have that access there because I know some people are choosing to not run a grey water tank. We need it in a, in a national park like we are today, but you could convert that to a fresh water tank if you wanted, and having that access there is handy. 15 amp in, so our man, mains power in. And this is one of the big things that is an in, a standard inclusion on the 2024 models, and that's our instantaneous hot water system. We've had a few experiences with this, and the only thing we don't like about instantaneous hot water is that it takes a little while, like it does at home, to run through hot. So we've worked out ways and how to capture the water before it runs hot, like filling up the kettle and those sorts of things. So when Movo jumps in to have a shower, she's not freezing and screaming and that sort of thing. <laughs> Here's the fresh water fill for the front water tank, and this is also our mains water connection. Now. When I first jumped in this van, I thought, oh, where's all my space to store all my gear? Well, this tunnel boot here kind of blows me away. I've got a barbecue stand in here. I've got my barbecue. I've got the arm. I've got an anti-flap kit. I've got all of our um, side walls and those sorts of things. To be really honest, there's plenty of room for more stuff in there. So it looks small but it runs almost the whole length of the van underneath the bed. And it's all it's an awesome tunnel boot. Next to that, we've got a generator slide and it is the biggest generator slide I've seen in a Jawa van. You could actually literally run a generator here. I've got all my pipes, a 15 amp lead, block and chop kit, an additional cassette for the toilet because we're off grid a lot. And I just store our little hot plate over here as well. Like, you could fit three generators in here, so heaps of space. And um, also, one of the things I want to point out about these is that they're vented. 
So what's really cool, if you're carrying a generator with fuel in there, is that you've got these vents that run to the external, which are weatherproof as well. And for whatever reason, they're dustproof. I think they've got a, a filter in there. Yeah, they've got a filter in there. So really, really well thought out, well laid out. Quickly here, you will see these electric roof actuators. And again, Mavo and I, when we first heard about electric roof actuators, we're a bit like, oh yeah, we're, we're right. We can lift the roof up. We don't have many sporting injuries and that sort of thing. Now that we've had them, we love them and we probably would never go back to them. The other thing on this side, you'll see it here and you'll see it on the other side as well. These tinted blacked out windows are, are huge. So they allow a huge amount of airflow to get into the van as well. So um, actuators as standard as well on this particular model. And I believe in all of the 2024 models for that matter, where you've got a pop top roof. So let's move to our toolboxes and our front drawer bar now. In this one, you've actually got a whoops, you've got a built-in um, jerry can holder here. I've got my diesel jerry can in here. I haven't filled it at the moment, but again, on the right side of the van for counterbalancing weight and those sorts of things, we're storing pegs. <laughs> no, we're storing. That's just the bag for the um, the awning, the navigator awning. Yeah, so I don't lose it, and I know so where it is. So don't lose it, and she knows so where it is. So I just pegged it to that. We've also keep things that we need to get to when we're doing our setup in this particular um, toolbox at the front. So I've got my little screw in pegs, got my mallet, got Mavo's fishing uh, reels and that sort of thing as well. So it's actually really quite big in there. I'm surprised at how much space is in that toolbox. In here, we've got our LPG storage unit. Nice and neat, all vented as well, just like the tunnel boot I showed you. Um, all compliant with new gas regulations and, and all of that sort of thing as well. Now let's take a look at this drawbar. This drawbar I've discussed in previous videos. Because it's obscured by this massive toolbox, you don't realise how long it is. But I've had so much enjoyment, not only out of the towing dynamics of this van, but also just the fact that it's long enough to not when I've got it at full lock, and I have had it at full lock a couple of times, I'm not going to do any damage to my rear bumper. I'm not going to do any ramp, uh, damage to this stone guard or these, um, or these beautiful toolboxes either. Standard with all um, Jawa vans, your DO35 hitch, Cruise Master 3.5 ton hitch. Um, you hope you never have to test that out. Same as the breakaway cable, you never want to test that out either. Good peace of mind knowing that it's there. You've also got your ARC 750 Extreme Off-Road Jockey Wheel. And I've also got my little <laughs> cooktop plate that I put on the burners, which I'll show you in a second. Just really well configured. There's room here for my barbecue mount, which I talked about in the tunnel boot there. It swings beautifully over here. I've also got an additional bayonet here, so I just plug my barbecue straight in here. And it sits right in front of me, out of the way of the kitchen. And particularly, you know, when you're off grid, particularly if you've got a bigger family or something like that, we've, we've got all of the barbecue space that's not taking up in our footprint of our awning. So really, really nicely configured drawbar. Tap here as well. I know that may sound simple, but there's a tap here and there's a tap on the rear drawbar. I use them all of the time. I'm out here doing maintenance on the car, maintenance on the van serious guys like these taps it's it's nothing that you're going to look at when you go to a caravan show or a feature of a van but they're perfectly positioned now let's talk about the best part not that any of that's not good but the best part of this outdoor area with the sirocco so i'm not gonna i'm gonna keep you in suspense for a moment <laughs> i'm gonna show you quickly again dual vented and also with a little 12 volt fan where the switch is just here. So on those really, really hot days, you can turn this fan on and, and just, I guess, cater for the fact that it gets up to 50, 60 degrees in the middle of summer within these fridge slides. You've got a fridge and the compressor's running and pumping hot air out. So you've got these synonymous with Jawa, really well thought out, these really big pantries. So as you can see, we've got a toaster in here. We've got our, um, what do you call that, a pot? Tea towels. Tea pot. towels, baking dishes, little gas cooktop toaster, 
pots and pans, utensils, got some more lights in here. Like literally. All the mozzie, yeah, um, mozzie the gear. stuff. Got enough here to feel like we're at home. 96 litre Evercool Series 2 down under fridge. Um, pretty efficient. You can run it as uh, freezer, freezer, fridge, freezer, freezer, uh, sorry, fridge, fridge. You, got, you can also shut one zone down on this. And I'm probably going to consider doing that when we're off grid for 20 days at a time just to ensure that wherever we can get some power savings, we'll get some power savings. But I'll talk about the power system in a second. Welcome to the beautiful park. <laughs> We've long been looking at these vans, and this is one of the things that originally drew us to Jawa, is this amazing pantry. And to give you an idea of depth, it's nearly two foot into there, one and a half foot I would say, where we don't only have all of our plates and cutting boards, but we've got lots of general items here that effectively is just like having a pantry at home. So for us, we've been off grid for two of the three weeks that we've had um, the Sirocco. Um, we've had more than enough stuff, to be really honest, probably more than we need. Yeah. And then we've also got these amazing little pull out drawers. And this bit, you may have seen on our stories the other day, is a game changer. So you pull out pantry, and I've actually found because it's nicely lined and insulated, but stuff keeps pretty cool in these drawers as well, even on the hottest days. Like when we were driving across the Air Peninsula the other day, it hit about 47 degrees. And when we were in Esperance, everything, even that night when I was cooking, was still relatively cool in here. So that was really, really awesome. Another thing about the 2024 models, and I love this pantry concept, and it's a reason I think the Sirocco has been such a synonymous van with Jawa, is that they've split out the sink and the cooktop and this door for the pantry. So what that means at night time when you're in a place like us where there's goannas and kangaroos and all sorts of wildlife, you can close this down at night without having to reset all of this up. But you know your pantry's fully locked up and nothing's gonna get in there. The seals on this are amazing as well. So the pinch welds and rubber seals really just pull it all together, so let's just go through the rest of the cooking setup here and the way that all of this is configured and pulls together. First of all, we've got a really good size sink. I really like the size of this sink. It's not too big, but it's definitely big enough for the two of us. And it gives us a bit of space here for this preparation bench. What's great about this preparation bench is I've got my cold stuff from my fridge here. I've got my cooktops right here. So it's really well orientated on the van. There's another little useful drawer in here as well and that's where I store my gar barbecue gas hose and just our washing up gear over to the cooktop cooktop is a standard four burner hob but I really like the the configuration and layout here I utilize that plate that I showed you a little bit earlier whack it here or here and I can use that as a barbecue if we only stop for a night or two and I don't want to go to the extent of setting the barbecue up really good cutlery drawer here as well Great size, everything that we've got fits in here perfectly. Now, a couple of other things just down under here. First of all, how great is this? Anybody that's had a Jawa before would remember that white hose. This is much sturdier. And if you have a couple of beers and go to put that away and forget about that white hose like I did a hundred times, this is a little bit more, uh, not a little bit, a lot more sturdy. You could also, it's not plumbed to the gray water, but you could, um, whack one of your drainage hoses and then run it back to, if you're at a caravan park, a drain or something like that. The other thing that's over here is a really well positioned gas bayonet. So it's really quick and easy to pull this kitchen out and then attach this hose to the gas bayonet and you set up. There's a little side table on here as well. This is new and that just gives us an extra preparation space as well. And that just folds over. I've got the wind cover on at the moment, which comes off but that all folds over, that folds down, and when you push it all back away, it goes. Really, really quickly on the kitchen. Older Sirocco's didn't have this. I think it was done in the 23 models, but 
All of this is fully plumbed permanently, so you're hot and cold water. You don't need to worry about attaching and reattaching when you're looking to go. So configuration wise, we did have a question come through the other day and maybe solve for it. So tell me all about it. So the issue that was raised was you're washing up your dishes here and then your clean dishes are then dragged across to the little table station over here, mm. ready for dry up. So I kind of agreed that that doesn't really work. So what I thought was generally you're finished with the fridge. So just pull this out a bit and then you can wash up and then pop your clean dishes over here on the fridge and then dry from there. And then that way you're not dragging your stuff across the stove. I don't know, that's what I do. I do to address the issue because it is a bit of an issue dragging your stuff over here. Um, we talked about it and we thought maybe we would swap these two around but then yeah. when you think about it you don't really want your gas cooktop right next to your fridge that's trying mm. to stay cool. Yeah. So I, I like this preparation bench and the ability to be able to go here's my cold stuff, here's my stove, it's really yeah. really handy. You yeah. can configure it either way but I think yeah. that's a really good workaround. So generally put dirty dishes here, dirty dishes, washing up, grab them, oh, pop them over there. here. And then with this idea, when I run out of space because we've had so much washing up, guess what? Ant has to help clean up. Mm. <laughs> yeah, whatever. All right, really, really quickly. This is a really useful utility table, particularly when you stop it on the side of the road to make a coffee with the jet boil or something like that. We've yeah. got a 10, oh sorry, a 15 amp in, uh, sorry, output. So when the uh, inverter's on, or when you're on power, you can plug in here. We've got these really cool little 12 volts and they're all over the van. You'll notice that the older style USB and the newer style USB, there's your TV outlet as well. So if you wanna pull the TV from inside and pop it on outside. So behind the hub guys, this is something that you're not gonna see when you go to a caravan show, off-road brake magnets. And that's something that's been uh, upgraded and, and beefed up in the 2024 models as well with people testing their vans off-road more and more these days. Upgraded, um, really nice rims, all-terrain tires, Make sure you let Jawa know when you order all terrain or mud terrain and those sorts of things. But the last thing I want to talk about is this awning. So in the last week, we've been off grid here, completely off grid in Cape Arid National Park. We've had a lot of rain, a lot of overcast weather, and some days that have been quite windy. One day where we had 70k an hour wind gusts and 50k an hour constant winds, we took the awning in because it just made good sense that no awning is going to withstand that sort of sustained wind during a storm and that sort of thing. But during the nights where it's rained, during the days where it's got up to 30, 35 k an hour winds, I found this pin the way that we've got it absolutely adequate and not a problem at all. One, make sure you've got a bit of a drop on your awning so that the water's going to run one way or another. You will also see the way that we've set it up at the moment because we do have rain forecast again tonight. I'm actually utilizing the annex poles that come, so I haven't had to buy anything extra. And we've just got these two rafters installed off the fascia of the um, awning uh, cover. And then connected at this end with the spiky pole, I call it a spiky pole or a spigot pole, it's probably got a proper name, but anyway. And then the last piece, is make sure you're anchoring your legs into the ground with a good quality pin so it's not going to move because that bounce is what creates the problem with these legs some of the time. A decent strap running one way to the ground and I've talked about these in a lot of videos but our navigator straps running to the to the off the fascia of the awning and it's really really well set up so there's never a perfect awning that's going to withstand every single weather system that comes through. This is the standard awning, guys, and, and, you know, I've got a really nice awning on the car as well. I don't know whether it's worth doing it, but I'm going to leave that one over to you. I've found this awning more than adequate. Covers the fridge, covers the back of the van, covers the door, obviously. Got good clearance with this door. Actually, that's another thing. Rounded corners on the door in this model. That rounded corners doesn't mean much, but if you've accidentally got this drop too low, you don't want a square corner door eating into your vinyl on your awning either. 
So just little bits and pieces, little tweaks, little improvements. Um, uh, we've, we've really enjoyed living, particularly in this outdoor area. I know I sound like I'm excited, a little bit more excited than normal, but I haven't got a negative thing to say. It, the, the, particularly, and I love living outdoor because Mavo's usually in watching maps and it just hurts my intelligence when I watch <laughs> that show. So, um, yeah, I couldn't be happier with the way that this enables this type of camping, like a week off grid. We're still loving it. I want to show you one more thing. I forgot to do it earlier. I know I talked about it on the front, but this little drawbar tap, I have used so many times. I might be doing maintenance on Barry or the van or mucking around out here doing something for Mavo and getting all dirty. I run to that little tap, wash my hands, away I go. So good. All right, so I'm gonna throw you over to the Mavie and she's gonna give you a run through the inside of the van. Up to you. Oh, thank you. You just want me to trip over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is the inside of the Sirocco Grande. Um, okay, first of all, you've got a handy little cupboard here. I, I put my washing bits and pieces down there, so like pegs and washing powder, so it's easy to get to, so that when I'm coming in and out of the door, I literally don't have to enter the van, I just reach across and grab it. Good idea. Um, and my coins and money in there. I may move coins and money and keys if we're in a dodgy remote area though. You also have, did you want to talk to this yeah. Got all your inner drive gear here guys. So I talked about that MPPT earlier. That's over there in the corner. There is the DC to DC and I do have the soft panel although it's starting to get fairly dark. Um, we've got a 3000 watt inner drive inverter upgraded for the 2024 models. I don't know what that wouldn't run. And then we've got 400 amp hours of Enerdrive, so two by 200 uh, Enerdrive uh, lithium batteries. So it's almost like a portable power station. Yeah, so there's not much space in there to store anything. So just little bits and pieces, bits and pieces for uh, the sink area. So you've got a sink area here because there's no sink in the shower and the toilet. This is where your uh, hand washing sink, brushing your teeth happens. Really, really quickly, you may have watched uh, some of our socials the other day. I actually made, I brought my induction burner out of the car. We've got the PowerPoint over here and I just utilized this space to be able to cook. Given the size of that battery, it's really, really easy with the induction burner. There's no internal cooking in this model of the Sirocco in terms of a gas cooktop, although. But we're running with um, the portable uh, induction burner so I run it out of the car or run it out of the van. The other thing I forgot to say about that 400 amp hours of lithium is all vented outside of the van. It's concealed and then vented outside of the van to comply with all of the new uh, regulations for batteries and those sorts of things. Sorry Maeve, back to you. No, that's okay, all good. Um, so you've got a nice seated dining area here. I really love the colour of the interior yeah. here. Joe, I have done a really nice job. Like I really like the floor and the cupboards. They've done a really nice, tasteful job here. So thumbs up to them. You've also got a Wabasto air conditioner in the Sirocco. It works pretty well on that 50, oh, 50 degree day, Nelly. Yeah, it does it? actually. And so before I walk up to the back, we might as well do the toilet and the shower. Turn the light on maybe. Oh, sorry. So these are touchable lights, so there's a little, you probably can't see it, but there's a little dot and you just touch it and the light comes on. You've also got an extraction fan. Yeah. And what I love about uh, the bathroom or the ensuite here is that you've got these cute little cupboards for all your bits and pieces. The cupboard goes right back to the back of the toilet, so I store our toilet tablets and toilet cleaner and stuff right at the back and then I've got a con other containers in there as well for example these drawers here are quite quite big as well that's ants drawer so, really really quickly shower head you love that don't you yeah that's the shower head the same shower head I'm pretty sure from the stealth so loving the shower head no complaints from D <laughs> <laughs> and we hang the little oh, squeegee there when we clean the squeegee. shower. And our little squeegee, we always clean the shower when we're done, just to keep it nice and clean and tidy. Whip around, and I'll show you the cupboard space that we've got available. So, first of all, this is where all our shirts and shorts are. And then you've got another 
decent size cupboard here for any hanging items it's really deep like oh, wow. it's as long as my arm so it's great so i store some things right at the back behind the clothes as well <laughs> okay so um another hot tip that i also have these little baskets come from kmart i don't know they're about i don't know seven dollars something like that they're really handy but what i did also discover is that you could potentially using the lids that come with them you could potentially stack and this is how deep these cupboards are you can fit two in you could actually wow. you could actually fit four in so and then they go right back and then wow. you put the other one in oh yeah so that's pretty cool that is very cool i'll fix that later <laughs> Um, what have we got down here? These drawers here, I was going to put our underwear and pyjamas in here, but because we're a little, a little bit inclined to do tech stuff, I've used, I've utilised these drawers here close to the table, so it's easy access for us. Really, really quickly, it was that's not the truth. She had far too many pairs of swimmers to fit <laughs> in those two drawers, so we had to go elsewhere. Back to you, maybe. Mm, not true. Okay, down here, it's really quite small down here. So I just popped a little case in here to pop little odd items. For example, my little Ufi vacuum cleaner that I got from Super Cheap Auto. It's really good, actually. About $89. Cool. I didn't think it was a good idea, but I don't Yeah, like, like it. look. Oh. You've cleaned it, mate. Yeah, look. Cool. Look at all that stuff that I've picked because up. Because you're a grub. Yeah, so it's really good. Um, and you know, like sticky dots and you know, stuff uh, you don't need all gym the time. bands, things you don't need all the time. So that's that. This one here is not not a real cupboard. It's got a pump in there. Got one of the water pumps in. I need to talk about that because you've reminded me. Two water pumps in this van. So we've got the two pet tanks, and they run on an independent pump. I like that idea. It may sound funny, but if for whatever reason you have a pump failure, you know that you've got a second pump in the van, you may need to transfer water from one tank to the other, and there's external taps underneath to be able to do that. But to be really honest, I like the fact that you've got two pumps just in the off chance that you do have a failure when you're a long way off grid. You always had something to say, right? Sorry. Always got something to say. Okay, so the other cupboard space that you've got um, is here. So we just put our towels in here, underwear, pajamas, and winter clothes. Oh yeah. Oops, sorry. Yeah. Uh, this cupboard here, I have to say, is a little bit awkward because the mattress is in the way. So the mattress it, topper is. And in the, the way. mattress topper is in the way. So we don't use it very much. So I've just got like our first aid stuff in there that we don't need to get to very often. And then over here, you've got a secret little compartment oh. in there. It's really quite deep. So I store things like my jewelry and things like that, that I want to hide away. You could even hide your keys in there when you're in places that aren't very trustworthy. Can you fit a laptop in there? It's very deep. Right, okay. I'll show you how deep it is. And it's not accessible. No, head. It's not accessible from the outside either. Okay. Um wait. That's my arm, can you yeah, see? Yeah, I arm? reckon you could fit my, my laptop in there. You definitely put phones and Yeah, stuff. it's really deep. Oh, here's my ears. <laughs> okay. So you've also got two Sirocco fans. One here and one over here. You've got the Jawa Smart TV, and I just Velcro dotted the remote to the wall. Um, and you've got a stand-up Dometic, how big is this one? 110. Fridge, 110. Check it out. Absolutely love a stand-up fridge. Now, I'll get Mavo to throw a picture in here with this particular, this is the last prototype before the 2024 models. And so there is a slight difference here. What you will find is that there'll be a microwave in the top of this drawer where the fridge is currently sitting. And then the fridge will shift down a little bit and that will take a little bit of storage space away from this cabinet. We have had microwaves in vans and we've utilized them, but um, yeah, so to solve for that internal cooking piece, there will be a microwave included and that fridge will drop down a little bit. Okay, that's a, that's great, but also a shame because this cupboard is super handy for all your <laughs> shoes. 
But look at all that space at the top, mate. You might even uh, mightn't even notice it. Yeah. And people may not have as many pairs of shoes as you. Um, nothing to do with the Jawa van, but uh, my washing basket. It's also from Kmart. Um, about twelve dollars. It's collapsible. Best thing. And so small, compact. It's great. Love it. Lots of space up here too, hey? Yeah. She's drunk all of that in two days. <laughs> oh, Anthony. All right, is there anything else that we needed to go over? Um, when we were in the van uh, for the first couple of nights, we were like, oh my God, those blue little lights are everywhere and they're shining <laughs> yeah. in our faces at nighttime while we're trying to sleep. Yeah. We didn't realize you actually turn them on and off. I'll show you the button. Yeah, this oh, is a, this one here. a hot tip, everyone. This is a hot tip. And they, they are so good too. Okay. So, this is your little plug. And that's the little button you turn on and off, just here on the side. Nothing worse than those little blue or red lights in your face. Dust reduction. Oh, the dust reduction. Swear by them. We have done so many dusty roads so far whilst having the Sirocco Grande. No dust in the van whatsoever. So, hands down, have to have. Love have to have. Okay, and I nearly forgot there's another compartment under the bed. So, Ant stores his Starlink down here. It's actually quite big in here. Oops, sorry about the banging. <laughs> yeah. Room for four to six 30 packs of cans. <laughs> oh, and we also store the, um, the drones in there as well when we're driving. So it's a really good cabinet, it's really large. And there's also space underneath this chair here that you could pop, I don't know, gosh, Ant, how many cartons of beer do you think? Uh, at least three. <laughs> the wheel arch is there, but at least three. Yeah, so anyway, you could store maybe your shoes in there when you have a microwave taking Ooh. up this space. <laughs> maybe, maybe. There's also two little cupboards down here that I store our card games, you know, those, those kind of things in there and anything else that you don't need in a hurry. Fold up table. Yeah, fold up table. So when you're traveling, I won't knock my native put. flowers and my shelves, but yeah, this folds up and just sits over there when you're traveling. Control of the, of the Sirocco Grande. So, got the fear in head unit that I talked about on the outside. You've also got your indoor controls for your AquaGo instantaneous hot water. This is really well positioned for your roof actuators. That's your up and down and it's right where you open the door and you don't need to crawl through the van to find the switch to put the actuators up. It's right there. It does it really quickly. Here is also the um, indoor control unit for the diesel heater. I forgot to show you the diesel tank, but it's on the drawbar in one of the toolboxes and that um, we haven't had it going because it's been so hot. But um, Ebenspatcher is a German brand and the reason that Jawa have gone with Eberspatcher is that they've got Australian service agents as well. So really thoughtful there around an expensive item, which is all included in part of your um, price point to drive away. Really, really quickly, maybe I'll show you, get you to show me up here. We've got the BM Pro here, or the E Pro for the battery. We've been off grid for a week. We've been running Starlink and all sorts of things, which is very power hungry and the 600 watts combined with my soft panel and the MPPT and the DC-DC are keeping it up there. 3000 watt inverter control. And I just wanna talk about this. It kinda of looks like you need to be a pilot to operate this van. It's really not that hard. What you've got is you've got your instrument panel here which controls all of your gauges. You can switch it off at night because that can be pretty bright. You've got eight switches here and another switch here for your rear light. And then you've got all of your resettable breakers here. Now the thing I love about that, and it looks like there's lots there, but if one thing goes in a chain when lots of things are one on, on the one breaker, you lose everything that's connected to that one breaker. So having individual breakers, and I know it looks like a lot, but you're probably never gonna need to use these. You've also got your main 60 amp trip switch here and the main shutoff switch for the batteries there. 
some more 12 volt stuff, your speakers. Combined with this Enerdrive gear sitting under here, it's absolutely amazing. A really, a, one last hint. Oh God. One last hint around water usage. So we've been off grid for six nights. Yeah, look at that. We're getting, oh no, we're not too bad. And I washed my hair last night too. Mm. I washed my hair too, but it doesn't take as long as what Maybe's hair wash takes. So all of that water has lasted us six nights and we've still got enough for at least another two nights, I reckon. Tell us about your showering technique. Yeah, so uh, to save water, what we do is wet yourself down and then turn the tap off and then uh, lather yourself up and then turn the tap back on and rinse off. Um, another hot tip is don't put the water pressure completely on, maybe put it on half so that you're not using so much water in that little rinse off hot tip. I tried to convince her to give us an actual demonstration of that but she uh, politely declined, <laughs> not so politely. But uh, yeah, in all seriousness guys, I think there's enough water to be off grid for eight uh, eight days. Uh, we shower every day and as Mavo said, we, we do sort of try to conserve water, mm -hmm. but we don't stink. Oh, maybe I might, but <laughs> no, I'm joking. We don't stink, we have a good shower and um, as I said, water's going to be the thing that pulls you up. Power, even with all of the um, rain and weather and that sort of thing, we're still sitting at 90% on the um, ePro at the moment. So given all of the power that we use with all of our devices and Starlink in particular, which is like running two fridges, um, we're running a six hours a day generally, um, you're almost indefinite in, in terms of uh, staying off grid. So yeah. it's a really, really great van for an active couple like us. Really, really great van if you're looking to chill and have a great time. Uh, I know that we sound really positive about it, but we're not just saying it for the sake of saying it. We've found very little of anything that we would change with, with this particular van. And if you've already ordered one, or if you're thinking about ordering one, you've got our full endorsement. We, we really love it. Jawa's positioning in the market at the moment is not all of these Chinese imports are the same, and they clearly aren't the same. It's the thought, the effort that goes into the design of the new models, but it's also the quality of the inclusions and the tens of thousands of dollars of extra stuff that's bolted in and all included in the price point for this particular van. So yeah, we're stoked. Hope you enjoyed it. Ah, ask us heaps of questions. We want to get heaps of questions about this. We're happy to share our experiences and want to hear your thoughts as well. So thanks guys. See you in the next one.